Hello, and welcome to Sarah Tech's Legacy Data Conversions webinar. My name is Sarah Itsugi, and I'm your host today. This webinar is part of a series we're presenting this year, focusing on ways companies can improve their product development process. Today, our speakers are Ken Sherwinski and Kelsey Safar. Ken is a Senior Vice President of Engineering Services and Consulting at Saratech, with 30 years of experience in engineering, predominantly in the aerospace and defense sector. And Kelsey is a key member of our engineering team with lots of experience in helping customers with legacy data conversion. Now I'll pass the presentation over to Ken. Sarah, thank you very much, appreciate that. Uh, hey everyone, thanks so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to talk with us. Today we're gonna to be talking about two common problems that. Uh, that we've talked over the last six months, quite a number of customers that we work with, and they've come to us with two specific issues. One of those is relative to legacy data. What do they do with legacy data? And the other one is, how do you uh, create a more efficient process of 2D drawing creation? Both of which are really inefficient issues that companies deal with. So today we're gonna talk about kind of what some of the um, solutions are around those two problems. We're gonna talk a little bit about the business benefits, how do you deal with legacy data? And when I talk legacy data, I'm talking about old data files, old Mylar drawings or old PDF files that are not in a nice parametric 3D solid model that you can actually create engineering around that CAD solid model. We'll talk briefly about misconceptions and then talk really about industry best practices and what some of our customers have done to mitigate these problems. First of all, let's talk about the common problems. A lot of times, in fact, let me start off with a story. Six months ago or so, maybe five months, we, we spoke to a customer and they were operating uh, old helicopters, uh, roughly circa built in 1960s, 1970. And clearly they didn't have CAD models. And they said, hey, one of our problems is we have all of these, we have the engineering completed in PDF files, but every time we wanna make what's called a supplemental type certificate change or modification, We've got to go in there, we've got to reconstruct that data, and then we've got to create new engineering. And I think it was some solid works that they use. And so they said, it's such an inefficient process. Normally what should take us a couple of months takes us you know, almost a year to develop simply because we have old legacy data. And, we, and this is becoming a recurring theme with the number of customers we're talking with that have old equipment. And we said, all right, well, this is one item for a thought leadership uh, series that we're talking about today. We talk about lengthy product development life cycles, as the example I've just talked about. We talk about high non-recurring costs for new products. When you have to continuously go in and update data using old information, it continually drives cost and lead time in that product development. So we're gonna be talking about how to leverage old designs into new 3D CAD models and uh, update designs for spare parts and maintenance. You know, as, as a product gets in the field and goes through the maintenance cycle, uh, let's say a product's been in the field 15, 20 years and a part breaks, it's very difficult to find a replacement part for that part that's broken. It's very difficult to go in, find where that the CAD model is or find that engineering detail, build a part and then give that to your customer for con continued operation. So those are some of the common industry problems that we face. Now, what are the business benefits? Well, if you look at de legacy data conversion, and that's really, again, taking old information, if you were to take that old data and, and do a comprehensive program where you update all of that old information into a new 3D modern CAD system, down the road, you're gonna save a lot of errors and emissions. You're gonna reduce a lot of that stuff. You can have leaner manufacturing capabilities. For example, when you take um, CAD models, sometimes CAD models can go straight to NC program code and really uh, improve the efficiency as opposed to having to create you know, brand new NC program codes. You have lower non-recurring costs for future designs, typically you have a much faster design to market because you already have that legacy data inside your CAD system. And again, we're talking about from a maintenance standpoint, you can improve the overall repair facility aspects of that part. Now, when it comes to 2D drafting, now, 2D drafting really is this. Let's say that you have an, you're an engineer and an engineering team. You have a defined number of engineers. You want your core engineering team to be focused on product development. That's where the smarts and intelligence is, is really around the product development piece and how you can make and design a best product. A lot of times, if a company isn't developed yet for model-based definition, they have to create 2D drawings for either suppliers or the quality assurance to review. 
And, and sometimes that process uh, gets very complicated and it's a very lengthy, costly process. So what we've talked to a number of our customers about is they'll focus on the 3D CAD modeling and they'll give, for example, us the ability to create a low cost uh, solution for them, which is basically creating all the draftings to their standards, to their layering schemes, to their GD&T kinematic studies around that uh, from a 2D drafting or data set standpoint. So again, a lot of business benefits with a lot of legacy data conversion and 2D drafting offload. Typically, when we talk to our customers, they report roughly a 20 to 30% efficiency gain in uh, looking at these two parameters. Now, if you want to focus on why companies offload, we're going to focus on the top four. Uh, this was a, um, a report that we saw a couple of years ago published by Deloitte. Now, companies offload for four primary reasons, although there's more reasons listed, but one is to reduce cost. How can they find a more if cost-effective way to get their engineering released? Number two, it's for them to focus on their core business, which in most cases is to design product not necessarily create the documentation around that product. Number three, it's to solve capacity issues, meaning that, boy, what do you do when you have, you know, another, let's say, 10 or 15 full-time equivalents that you need in terms of headcount? How do you solve that? Do you hire in contractors? Do you hire people? Uh, or do you find a, a good com a competitive or in, um, competent partner to work with? And then number four, it's to enhance the service quality aspect. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kelsey, and she'll talk a little bit about the choices and some of the other items on the agenda. Kelsey, go ahead, please. Thank you, Ken. So the next topic that we'll be going over is what choices do you have as you go through the legacy conversion project? Now, the first thing you can do is stick to the status quo and just create the CAD models as you best see fit for your company. Now, to do this, you're going to have to learn the process and understanding the transition between the old prints to the 3D product. Next is that you can use your core resource team to implement this program. However, this is going to take away from the high priority projects and therefore increase schedule on the projects that you've already allotted time to. The third option is to hire or utilize junior level engineers. Now, if you do this option, we implore you to have a quality checklist in place so that the engineers can output good 3D parametric data. And the fourth option is that you can find a trusted partner to outsource this, this work so that you can ensure quality conversion models. You can make sure that it can also be at low cost while also meeting all the schedule needs to allow your core resources to focus on the high priority projects for your company. Now, there are common misconceptions when, when it comes to outsourcing. And the first one is, can your company afford it? Yeah, and, you know, Kelsey, just to add to this whole thing, when we talk about offload, right, a lot of times a good supplier can be a, a much lower overall burden cost than uh, what your engineering hour is. So this might be a good option for some companies. That's true. And sometimes we find that customers believe that maybe it's not the right time for them. Yeah, and, and I would comment on this as well, that you know, timing is pretty critical. Uh, what, what isn't the right time is to miss program schedule, right? So that's more critical than saying, you know what, I've got to spend a little bit of effort developing a statement of work to get this moving. That's true. And it could seem that the, the communication and the process to get the project started might be too complex. Another... Another misconception is that possibly the outside supplier might not have the capability for your needs. Yeah, you know, at that point, there's an awful lot of good, competent suppliers out there in the market. Um, a lot of engineering service companies just make sure that uh, you do a pretty good check at, uh, at what capabilities and capacities they have. Yeah, that's true. And the last one is, when you send the data, is it going to be secure to the other company? And next we'll be going over the best practices for the conversion. And we found that other companies might have some different processes, but we have found that this is the best industry that has given us tried and true quality processes within 
a succinct process. Now, the first is being scanning the Mylar data to a PDF. Now, why a PDF? The pros to that is that PDFs are widely usable across many companies. And now that you are taking a tangible object into something digital, it can be more secure and can be translated a lot easier as a PDF. You know, Chris, here's another point I thought about is that, you know, a lot of uh, POM systems, CAD systems have the PDF viewer, so it's fairly easy to pull up that data. That's true. The second is that you can import that data into a legacy design secure PLM system, and this allows for revision control and configuration control. The third is that you comes to engineering process, you want to actually convert the 3D data into the convert the 2D data into a usable 3D parametric CAD data set. And the fourth that you want to make sure that the final product meets your quality standards to actually have a release CAD data. So finally, uh, there are some customer success stories that we found, the first being an ITAR project. We've seen that a government entity required to translate uh, Mylar data into CATIA V5 models. Now, the challenge of that is that sometimes there can be uncertainty and clarity of old Mylar data, especially with product structure. Now, the solution is to effectively communicate with the customer, understand and document these findings, and make sure you update the checklist as you go so that you can deliver correct data sets. And we found that the results that for the customer that it was, they were allowed to lower project costs. There was a huge reduction of error and this greatly increased digital flow downstream. The second customer success story was that there's a there was a commercial aircraft project that required low cost drafting. So there needed to be create a creation of 2D drawings from existing 3D CAD data sets. Now the, the solution was to have a combination of US and offshore, offshore resources to combat and have a low cost solution. Now the challenge of that is that there is an increase of time and location differences, but you can easily find a solution by having a good technical manager to have a conce concise project plan make sure that it's robust, there's a release plan, and that we can effectively track assignments and the priority. And the result that we found was that the customer was able to focus on product design, greatly reduce costs, and effectively meet schedule. Now, as you're maybe thinking about over uh, giving off the work packages, we want you to remember three key ideas. Make sure that you understand the requirements and that your outsourced company also understand these as well. It's pertinent. The third, the third thing to take, uh, the second thing to take away is to make sure that you're finding a company that's reliable for you and can best fit and solve your issues that come through the progress. And third, monitor the project's progress to make sure that you can meet your product's quality, meet schedule, and be under budget or within budget. Kelsey, thank you for that. We appreciate those insights. And for you folks here on this webinar, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, listen, this isn't rocket science. It's uh, what we've kind of seen over the last uh, number of years. We've supported many, many different customers, hundreds of customers in many different industry verticals. Uh, we see a lot of the same problems, the same challenges. And for the most part, the solutions are, for the most part, uh, transferable from one industry to the next. So this kind of what we wanted to share with you folks is just some of the issues that we've seen literally in the last six months to a year pop up with a lot of our customers. Uh, just as some quick information on Ceratech, we are we do three things pretty well. First is we're an engineering product development company. We provide a lot of services, stress, design, analysis, structural testing, for example. 
That's number one. Number two, we are one of uh, Siemens' uh, premier channel partners in North America. That means we have PLM software sales, implementation, and training. So if you're looking for a PLM system or a CAD system or a CAM system, you know, we've got some really good uh, Siemens platform to share with you. And then thirdly, we're into manufacturing 3D printing solutions. So if you can see all those three buckets that we play in, everything is centered around how do we help optimize the engineering development and product development for our customers? And that's really what it's all about. Uh, we're located in Mission Viejo, California. We have customers throughout the United States, uh, and we've taken on some very large, complex projects, and we manage them very well. And we have a long history of repeat business, which is pretty important from an engineering services standpoint. Great, thank you so much, Ken and Kelsey. So if you have any questions, um, please go ahead and enter them now. Um, and it looks like we have a few questions already, so we'll go ahead and answer those. But again, if you have any questions, please enter them now and we'll get to them. So the first question is, how important is it to create a parametric models versus stem solids? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that one. Thanks for the question. So it's much more superior to create a parametric model because it increases efficiency for the future revisions downstream for the design and it also helps assist with the manufacturing nc programming because it's directly tied to the features rather than just the dumb solids now you can utilize dumb solids downstream with synchronous modeling if you want to have revisions but that also depends on the software's capability so overall it's just a lot better to have uh, the 3d parametric fully um, concise data Great. Looks like we have a question from Parker. What has been your experience with scanning structure and creating models off of the scans? So I can take that again, one again. Um, so we would partner with a 3D scanning company and we would want to communicate with the customer to ensure that the um, type of the accurate cost will directly affect the type of scanning. So there needs to be communication on that point, but it's definitely doable. You can take a 3D scan and depending on the software downstream, um, it can be redirected into a solid and then taking those solids and understanding those measurements, you can uh, then in turn, turn that into a 3D parametric data set as well. You know, Kelsey, I will answer that a couple of years ago, we had a project with a, uh, an airframe customer and they had an old uh, Gulf 3 G3. We, uh, we took the scanning equipment in there. We put all the dots around it and we scanned a big upper section of the fuselage. And what we found is that it's a pretty comprehensive task to do that. There's a lot of data points. There's a lot of issues that you can come up with. Uh, so it's not as easy as it sounds, but it certainly is doable. And what we found here at the end of the day, even though it was a rather complex process to do that scan, still overall, it was a much more efficient process to try to recreate everything with dimensions and, and the old uh, legacy data. Yeah. Well, it looks like we have two more questions. Um, the first one is from Rebecca. She asks, how do you handle situations where the reference drawings are missing necessary dimensions? Yeah, that's a good point. Sometimes that can happen with really old data, but the best course of action is just communicating with the customer and making sure that the data transfer is also secure. And once you understand the right dimensioning, ensuring that there's a good document process so that that might not happen again downstream, and that'll ensure quality dimensions with the 3D parametric data. Yeah, one of the most important aspects there is to get with the, your customer's quality manufacturing team because you're going to be designing a product off of old legacy data and they have to it has to be manufacturable and it has to pass quality so those are pretty important items all right and final question from andy he asks, do you sometimes have difficulty reading the scan pdfs if so how do you resolve that that goes back to Ken's point is making sure that you're communicating effectively with the customer, but we definitely would suggest to test the scanning first before you scan a hundred different items. Um, so first, definitely scan, uh, test your, your scanner to make sure that there, there's a re reduction of unclear dimensions. 
But the second is sometimes that will just pass through, but it goes back to co effectively communicating with that customer and the engineers to ensure that um, the output is correct. Yeah, you know, just to that point here, I've got trouble reading my wife's shopping list. So what do I do? I ask her, what does she want? And so when you have a customer engagement, you just set up a process to uh, facilitate all those questions and answers. Great, well, thank you so much for those answers, Ken and Kelsey. Um, Ken, will you go to the next slide? Please make sure you subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn to be notified of future events and to gain access to our webinar recordings and training videos. Thank you so much for attending and have a great day. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.